this poem I'm going to start off with, it, 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 it's called Requests for Toy Piano. And it's about the impossible, complicated task of choosing a subject for a poem. The artist, this artist had to decide that he was definitively not going to do toaster ovens. You know? And it was, might have been a, a turning point for him or her. Um, out of all possible things in the universe, what do you write your poem about? I was playing with the, the, the daughter of a friend of mine who was studying the piano, and we were kidding her, and we were saying, play the one about, play the one about, play the one about the lonely ca cowboy who fell into the cactus. And she would say, you're silly. <laughs> so this is about choosing poetic subject. Play the one about the family of the ducks, where the ducks go down to the water, and one of them think, thinks the water will be cold, but then they jump in anyway, and like it, and splash around. No. I must play the one about the nervous man from Palestine in row 14, with a brown paper bag sitting in his lap, in which a gun is hidden in a sandwich. Play the one about the handsome man and woman standing on the steps of her apartment and how her perfume and the darkness and the beating of their hearts conjoin to make them feel like leaping from the edge of chance. No, I should play the one about the hard rectangle of the credit card hidden in the man's back pocket and how the woman spent an hour plucking out her brows and how her perfume was made from the destruction of a hundred flowers. Then play the one about the flower industry, in which the migrant workers curse their own cracked hands from tossing sheaves of roses and carnations into the back of the refrigerated trucks. No, I would rather play the one about the single yellow daffodil standing on my kitchen table, whose cut stem draws the water upwards so the plant is flushed with the conviction that the water has been sent to find and rescue it and raise it up from somewhere so deep inside the earth not even flowers can remember. Um, and this is, a, this is one about a couple who has been to see a nature documentary. Uh, on one of their earlier dates, inexplicable part of the plot. We don't know why they went to see the nature documentary, but it's a nature documentary we've all seen in which the mating habits are described in anthropomorphic terms of various species. You know, that the kangaroo rat, you know, has a very swift courtship, and that, you know, foxes, you know, don't call the next morning and things like that. <laughs> so this couple has been to see such a movie. It's called Romantic Moment. And we'll read this for my beloved partner, Kathleen. After seeing the nature documentary, we walk down Canyon Road onto the plaza of art galleries and high-end clothing stores, where the mock orange is fragrant in the summer night and the smooth adobe walls glow flesh-like in the dark. It is just our second date and we sit down on a bench, holding hands, not looking at each other. And if I were a bull penguin right now, I would lean over and vomit softly into the mouth of my beloved. And if I were a peacock, I'd flex my gluteal muscles to erect and spread the quills of my Cinemax tail. If she were a female walking stick bug, she might insert her hypodermic proboscis delicately into my neck and inject me with a rich hormonal sedative before attaching her egg sac to my thoracic undercarriage. <laughs> and if I were a young chimpanzee, I would break off a nearby tree limb and smash all the windows in the plaza jewelry stores. And if she was a Brazilian leopard frog, she would wrap her impressive tongue three times around my right thigh and pummel me lightly against the surface of our pond. <laughs> and I would know her feelings were sincere. <laughs> Instead, we sit a while in silence until she remarks that in the relative context of tortoises and iguanas, 
human males seem to be actually rather expressive. <laughs> and I say that female crocodiles really don't receive enough credit for their gentleness. And she suggests that it is time for us to go to get some ice cream cones and eat them. Um, and this is a, this is a, a, a sort of a strafing political inflected poem about American culture. Um, the, the first moment that's engaged is the moment in which you're in a store and you realize a song that you once loved very much has been turned into Muzak and is being played by, by violins or maybe just a synthesizer someplace. The, the words have been taken away. Uh, and, uh, and in this poem, the song that has been defanged is the Bob Dylan uh, apocalyptic poem, It's a Hard Rain, It's Gonna Fall. And the poem's called Hard Rain. After I heard It's a Hard Rain, It's Gonna Fall, played softly by an accordion quartet through the ceiling speakers of the Springdale shopping mall, I understood there's nothing we can't pluck the stinger from. Nothing we can't turn into a soft drink flavor or a t-shirt. Even serenity can become something horrible if you make a commercial about it, using smiling, white-haired people, <coughs> quoting Thoreau to sell retirement homes in the Everglades, where the swamp has been drained and bulldozed into a 19-hole golf course with electrified alligator barriers. <laughs> you can't keep beating yourself up, Billy, I heard the therapist say on television to the teenage murderer about all those people you killed. You just have to be the best person you can be, one day at a time. And everybody in the audience claps and weeps a little because the level of deep feeling has been touched. And they want to believe that the power of forgiveness is greater than the power of consequence or history. Dear Abby, my father is a businessman who travels. Each time he returns from one of his trips, his shoes and trousers are covered with blood. But he never forgets to bring me a nice present. Should I say something? <laughs> Signed, America. I used to think I was not part of this, that I could mind my own business and get along. But that was just another song that had been taught to me since birth, whose words I was humming under my breath as I was walking through the Springdale Mall. <laughs>